This talk is titled Using Digital Technology in Aphasia Rehabilitation. I'm Professor Jane Marshall, and my co-presenter is Professor Stephanie Wilson, and we're both from City University of London. Aphasia, or loss of language, is one of the most devastating consequences of stroke. Unfortunately, it's common. Over 40% of stroke survivors have aphasia in the early days post-stroke, and for half of those individuals, the problems will persist. Aphasia affects all aspects of language. Speech may be halting or even eliminated. Most people experience difficulties with reading and writing, and even comprehension may be poor. Not surprisingly, aphasia has serious consequences for the person's well-being. Many people with aphasia report feelings of isolation and reduced social activity. Those of working age often have to give up their jobs. Depression is common. Aphasia can improve, particularly when speech and language therapy is provided. However, there's a catch. Evidence suggests that results from therapy are best when many hours are provided. Yet few stroke survivors receive the recommended intensity or duration of therapy. Rather, there are numerous reports from stroke survivors of feeling abandoned, particularly after they leave hospital. The recent survey conducted by the Stroke Association indicates that the situation has got worse because of COVID-19. About half of stroke survivors reported the cancellation of therapy appointments and a third reported a decline in services since the pandemic began. But even if intensive therapy is received, most people with aphasia have some residual problems that, go up that are long lasting. Most individuals are left with some degree of language impairment. Can technology help? We would argue that it can. Of course, it cannot and should not address all aspects of aphasia rehabilitation, but it can offer numerous useful, practical, and in some cases, exciting supplements to conventional speech and language therapy. First of all, technology can broaden access to therapy. The pandemic has taught us that face-to-face -face therapy is not always possible, but for many people, this is not news. If you live in a remote area or, who have, or have mobility problems, getting to therapy appointments will always have been difficult. And we know that in many areas, domiciliary services are sparse. This is where video conferencing can help. Over five years ago, our team at City showed that FaceTime or Skype could be used successfully to deliver word finding therapy to people with aphasia over the internet. Our participants found this delivery mode acceptable, and many made significant improvements. We've since shown that people with aphasia can benefit from remote conversation practice, and we've run group rep workshops using Zoom. The recent Stroke Association survey showed that some, although sadly not all stroke survivors, were offered remote therapy sessions during the pandemic, and the majority of those individuals are positive about that form of therapy. Video conferencing is just one of the ways in which we can offer remote therapy. An alternative medium is virtual reality. Our research program at City has created a virtual reality platform called Eva Park. This is a simulated island with houses, a town square, a restaurant, a bar and a disco. And there are green spaces where users encounter water features, animals and birds. It's a place where people with aphasia can meet and talk with their therapist and with each other. Eva Park has many advantages as a therapy location. It's attractive, bright and sunny. There are things to amuse and surprise you. Many people find this motivating and say it adds joy to therapy. Eva Park offers a natural platform for conversation. You can order a pizza in the restaurant. You can talk about gardening in the greenhouse. It's a safe environment where you can practice difficult conversations before attempting them in the real world. Several of our participants report important firsts after using Eva Park. For example, for John, using Eva Park led to his first experience of ordering food in a restaurant since having his stroke. Our research has shown that Eva Park can be used to deliver both one-to-one -one and group therapy. 
our participants have enjoyed, even relished the opportunity, and some achieved significant gains in communication. They also valued its ease of use, as Beryl tells us on the next slide. It was easy. I'm doing it right here. I'm, I don't have to go out. Remote therapy can also be achieved by enabling people with aphasia to practice language exercises independently. There are now numerous apps that support such practice. For example, practice in saying words, reading, spelling, and forming sentences. These apps run on mainstream computers, tablets, and smartphones, and have, for the most part, been designed to be easy to use by people with aphasia. Activities can be personalized, and carefully structured so that they target a person's specific goals. And there's research evidence that this approach can make a difference. The recent Big Cactus trial showed that carrying out exercises with software called Step by Step improved production of at least the practiced words. Technology can also offer strategies for coping with aphasia. For example, many people with aphasia regain some useful speech, but have much worse writing. Our research has shown that through therapy, people can learn to use voice recognition technology in order to resume writing activities, such as sending email. We have similarly shown that people who struggle with reading can make productive use of text to speech and other assistive technologies. Catherine was a city analyst before her stroke. Her job involved high level language tasks, such as reading complex documents. She was an avid reader of novels and the news. After her stroke, reading for pleasure was impossible, and even correspondence and short news articles were difficult. Indeed, Catherine could only access written material if her mother read aloud to her. Through our Read It therapy, Catherine learned to use the assistive features of an e-reader, such as highlighting, plot summaries, and text to speech. During the therapy, she practiced using the technology on reading tasks at home, and discussed what she read in a weekly aphasia book club. As a result of this, Catherine was able to read a book independently for the first time since her stroke and was able to read emails from her daughter. Most of the ideas that we have presented so far use technology to augment or deliver familiar forms of therapy, but technology can also take rehabilitation in new directions. Our Inca research project has developed new digital tools that enable people with aphasia to create visual art or poems. These offer a new means of self-expression. The slide shows a painting created by a stroke survivor in a community workshop. And here is the actress Juliet Stevenson reading three poems written by people with aphasia using our Make Right app. These are three poems written by authors with aphasia. read by Juliet Stevenson. Walk upon shod wool, tranquil white velvet fleece. Smoke veils a calmness, sunset broods over the plain, passes down the stacks. I can't look at the bird too far, fly somewhere. We want to make one final point. Hopefully we have shown how technology can help to reach individuals, promote practice, compensate for problems and add creativity to rehabilitation. But there is a further reason for engaging technology in therapy. Digital technologies are ubiquitous. If you cannot access the internet or engage in social media, you are increasingly marginalized. And this is a real threat for people with aphasia. By using technology and therapy, we are reintroducing stroke survivors to this crucial medium. We have seen how people gain confidence from navigating their therapy technology and how they begin to think of themselves again as computer users. We will leave you with a quote from Fenella commenting on one of the benefits of her Eva Park therapy. She said, I'm doing things I never thought I'd do again, such as going on the computer and ordering my Freedom Pass. Thank you.